Good morning, and welcome once again to Digital Look TV. With us today is Zach Mir. He's the editor at Spreadbit Magazine. Zach, thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so let's start off with the Eurozone. We have the European Central Bank meeting this afternoon. Beyond whether it will be whether it will be it will suffice with the measures that the ECB is expected to announce. Beyond that, Spain and Italy ought to leave the eurozone. This is your view. Quite radical. Why? I think I think it's you know it's probably sort of a culmination of a few years uh, having seen uh, the carnage in the Spanish unemployment or the Spanish employment market. Mm. Could, could call it the unemployment market. Twenty five percent unemployment. Almost. Um, the real estate uh, meltdown is basically the, the inverse of what we've seen here in the UK, mm. where there's sort of, uh, let's say, full employment for anybody who wants to work, and uh, a booming uh, London real estate market. The, 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 the missing factor for Spain is just not being able to control its currency, which is obviously why economists 20 years ago and 30 years ago um, of the Thatcherite uh, model said no to uh, the ERM and mm. uh, the single currency. And uh, it's just, it's been... I think painfully simple, mm -hmm. um, but I think the suffering really for these countries should stop. I think what is interesting is that the country which has benefited most from uh, the, the failure of the, um, the EU is mm -hmm. the UK, and actually they're the people who potentially want to get out the most. The best thing that's happened to the UK is actually the, the, U, the failure of the EU. Mm -hmm. um, all the money and all the people are the best people who've had a brain drain uh, into central London. Uh, so, so really, um, I think that this, the, the issue is, I'm surprised that people in Spain and Italy and uh, Southern Europe are not saying we, we want to get mm. out of the EU. Um, and uh, really, you've got to look at whether the whole system or the whole idea actually worked, because in fact, it's unfair to the, to the, e, the UK is actually having the best of both worlds, being a semi-detached mm. member of this, uh, of this particular club. And, um, so um, it's a bit of a secret cow, this whole concept. Of the well, European I think, you know, obviously after 50 years, 60 years, and the, the UK spent 20 years trying to get in hmm. uh, to the EU, um, I think that uh, we've got to really look at the whole situation again. Uh, what is actually the, the, the correct thing is probably to say, you know, this, this single currency concept is a disaster, mm -hmm. and each country should at least have its own currency back again, um, even if it is the Spanish euro or the Italian euro. Right. Um, because their, 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 I mean, their currencies are 20% to 30% overvalued for what, what they need mm. to get uh, growth back again properly. And there's not a one cure fits all. Even if, the, even if uh, interest rates go to zero mm. um, um, after the ECB's intervention today, um, well, it hasn't actually made any difference with interest rates at 0 0.5 or 0 0.25. Mm. So it's, it's, th th there's no more uh, leverage on that mm -hmm. angle. Even if they go for outright QE and do it heavily, um, it's going to disproportionately distort the economy in, in Germany mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. probably won't be enough whatever they do with, with an overvalued currency. Whatever they do. Whatever they do. So mm -hmm. it's like, a bit like Draghi, well, whatever it takes. In fact, whatever he does, it's just not going to work because right. the, the problem is too big. The currency, single currency idea has just uh, hit them hard. And um, you know, all, you know, you've seen the benefits of having a single currency in the UK, and I'm, mm -hmm. they'd all die to have uh, the same eco economic situation mm. as 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 there is in the UK. And if you look at it, also, it's not even to do with politicians; it's actually just to do with having mm -hmm. your own uh, your own uh, currency. Okay, looking outside of the the eurozone, <clears throat> the big parameters that are also driving, contributing to all of the, this entire dynamic, the eurozone. People say. Well, you're saying now the ECB, no matter, even if it does what everything it needs to do, it will not be enough. However, other economic blocks, other regions in the world, I'm thinking China, I'm thinking Asia, I'm thinking Japan, perhaps even the U.S. as well, have they done, are they doing enough, everything, everything they ought to do? In a, in a way, perhaps, if Europe has failed in its pace of reforms, it's also trapped by what its commercial partners are doing. We're all in a sort of pr big prisoner's dilemma. Is that... True. Um, I think the the issue is um, obviously the main feature of the post financial crisis period has been ultra low interest rates uh, combined with um, QE. Hmm. Um, QE uh, or ultra low interest rates. Um, I think they are actually in a way a two-edged two sword. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably get people into uh, borrowing 
uh, a ridiculous amount of money mm -hmm. and leveraging themselves up to, uh, to a ridiculous degree. We'll, we'll see the fallout of that from that very soon indeed. Mm -hmm. And QE is a policy uh, I don't like because it's a big government policy. It's an interventionist policy. Mm -hmm. And I think that governments rarely know what they're doing in terms of economics. They know what they're doing in terms of winning elections or in politics. Mm. Uh, so and that's, not, you know, that's not a rocket science thing to say. Mm. Uh, so basically, um, I was surprised at, Q, at, at the QE move. Uh, every other crisis that we've had in the post-war war period, mm -hmm. uh, the gov governments have just simply raised interest rates, allow every, allowed everything to go bust, mm -hmm. and uh, then things uh, start off again. Uh, now we've mm -hmm. merely postponed um, the reckoning from 2007 uh, by six years or seven years, mm. and um, then but the, but the, 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 the downside has to happen. Mm -hmm. Even China is trying to prevent the downside happening. Mm -hmm. It's had 10 years or 20 years of fantastic growth. Uh, they're trying to they're trying everything they can do now to engineer a soft landing. You can't mm. have a soft landing. You have to have basically the capitalist system. You have to have boom and bust. I see. However, you you know the boom may be you know, may be able to make the boom last longer. Um, but the, in the end, there has to be a landing. Mm. Uh, I don't see any happy landings from um, the, the QE, uh, end of QE in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they will dither and they have to dither because, uh, you know, basically QE is a sort of a, it's, a, it's like a red flag. I mean, everybody sees it coming mm. and everybody will do the same thing at the same time. Hence, a crash, a risk of a mm -hmm. crash in, um, you know, the S&P and the Dow or the equity mm -hmm. markets there and a risk of, um, uh, a crash in real estate. Obviously, I'm not going to be one of those people who have been saying crash, uh, the Elliott Wave type people and mm -hmm. uh, uh, some other well-known economists uh, based in New York who have also been saying crash for the last um, five years plus. They're well, right. Nice. They're right, but it's the timing. They're absolutely right, and it'll probably be even worse than they think, but it is the timing. And the skill is... One the skill, the skill mm -hmm. is, Yeah, the skill is in the yeah, half a decade out, but mm -hmm. the skill is in the timing, and I think that we are very close to a reckoning, you know, the, the, the t point of mm -hmm. reckoning now, mm -hmm. um, but and I would expect it to happen in the next year or so. But I, there's no point really getting more specific than that, specific than that, given that uh, there's a whole legion of people who've got it wrong. Mm -hmm. it didn't buy, it didn't buy the, it didn't buy the S and P at 1700 or 1800 or even 1900, mm -hmm. and it'll go to 2000. You know, you, the, the, all those people who's gonna, who missed out on that, and uh, most people have missed out on the on the real estate situation as well. So. Um, I think that um, we'll see we'll see how the, the, this situation is ha is handled, but I don't see that uh, uh, people's you know the, the hands are tied in terms of raising rates, mm -hmm. and the, you know it's actually how to cool this off. And I don't think there's anybody's got an answer on that. Okay, how to call this off? Points of reckoning. The usually it's said it, it, it's true. The UK tends to almost lead the economic cycle in advanced economies. That also means that here in the UK we're a little that much closer. To a point of reckoning, as far as, for example, house price bubble. Yes, housing. I think I think we've got the uh, we've got the taxi driver test already. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the journey I had into the into the studio today. Uh, basically, he was uh, he'd sold his property in March. It's fifty thousand pounds more than uh, uh, than it was it would have been in December. And it doesn't really matter how much the the place was, but mm. fifty thousand pounds is is a, a big different is a lot of money, and it's a lot of uh, taxi fares as well. So, so really, once you're down to that stage, hmm. you're pretty near the top. And the only thing, the only problem now in this country is uh, we've got an election a year away. Hmm. But this is a problem which is uh, a sort of a wildfire now, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it needs to be addressed now. In fact, it needed to be addressed. If this was the the old days, you know, before hmm. QE, it would have been addressed probably a year or eighteen months uh, ago with a you know, quarter point rise on interest mm -hmm. rate or a half point rise on interest rate, just to keep things on, you know, uh, keep cool things off. And why not apply now a quarter point rise in interest rates? Because, because everybody will, uh, because we're in such a, an extended state, hmm. everybody will want to leave the party at the same time. There'll be a, there'll be a rush. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, there'll be a, the, 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 the first thing you'll see with the housing market really is that it'll just be down five or 10 percent in three mm -hmm. months from the top as soon as the interest rates go up, because everybody will be heading for the door. Probably people are already heading for the, for the door. The foreign buyers will start mm -hmm. heading for the door because of the um, election issue, Yes. Uh, the mansion tax issue, which is going to mm -hmm. come on, mm -hmm. and uh, various other aspects like that. So 
the, the next election here is just going to be a, a total okay. um, omelette in terms mm -hmm. of what could happen <clears> and different <throat> outcomes. However, talking about the next elections, the FTSE 100, uh, you were telling me before the interview about a lot of M&A transactions, especially American corporations trying to set up shop here in the UK, take advantage of the favorable tax legislation. However, interestingly, uh, you mentioned that there might be <clears throat> a deadline for them to move their wares from one shore to the other. Well, I think the dead. Well, I suppose the deadline is is really um, the the uncertainty of the new government. Hmm. Um, I, th I suppose it is starting to look like even just with the Astra and the Smith and Nephew mm -hmm. uh, deals that maybe sort of well, Astra has been knocked out um, unbelievably. But uh, with those deals coming through, and there's a bu much more M and A sort of you know mm -hmm. rumours going around going around now um, that there is something of a sort of. Uh, a rush towards the, this particular party in, as if it was a deadline to, to, to go for mm -hmm. uh, in next year and the election next year. So uh, I think the FTSE um, may benefit you know, quite a lot from that type of M&A uh, mm -hmm. and that might be the, the sort of the factor that takes it over the top, takes it through 6,900, 6, 7,000 mm -hmm. um, over the next few months or say by Christmas, something like that. Okay. I think um, there's just the only thing which is a bit worrying is that uh, it seemed to be that the AstraZeneca deal was um, rejected prime, almost on political grounds mm -hmm, rather mm -hmm. than uh, uh, sort of uh, financial or you know, due to shareholders considerations. Right, hence uh, the importance of the elections. Hence the importance of the elections, but I, I have to say I don't see mm. what, why uh, it was rejected. I think we'll probably find that out uh, uh, a bit later down the line exactly why it was uh, rejected, but it, it seems that strings were pulled in terms of that because 69 billion pounds is a lot of money. Uh, to say no to, and the share, average share price of that company was uh, uh, 35 pounds or 30 pounds mm -hmm. uh, for much of the past five years. Mm -hmm. uh, 55 pounds a share is is nice. Right. Even so, if you're going to make a move and try and get into the UK as a corporation, best do it now. I think it seems to be that you know, the Americans are coming, and uh, you know I think it's great for the FTSE, and it's great. It would be great for um, you know shareholders in in blue chip companies here mm -hmm. who've you know who've actually been treading water for since the, you know, the start of the century. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, they deserve to be uh, in the same sort of uh, uh, sunlight as the, the you know, shareholders in the S&P and the Dow and the Nasdaq. Right, okay. Well, Zach Muir, editor, Spreadbit Magazine, thank you very much for your time, and we do, hope, we do hope you will join us again soon. Thank you. And that's all from all of us here at Digilog TV for today. Thank you very much for your time.